Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I did a story not so long ago about people who'd been in the military. And when they got out, they later found that they had a quote-unquote arrest record from when they were in the military, despite the fact they'd never been arrested. And the problem arose because apparently the military was describing something as an arrest that most people in the civilian world wouldn't have considered an arrest. And I want to emphasize that word because if somebody asks you, have you been arrested, uh, you should know the answer to that question. And so there were some people who left the military because they'd never been arrested, assumed they'd never been arrested, but yet their records showed an arrest. So they therefore had an arrest record. Now, <laughs> I want to explain this clearly because after I did that story, I had several people get mad at me uh, and contact me and complain that I was somehow besmirching the name of some organization or other uh, and that I was explaining it wrong. But I'm explaining it perfectly clearly here because I'm getting the story from the news. It's widely reported. And there's been an update now. And by the way, this update comports with the previous story in how they describe what exactly happened. So we're talking about a story from Fox News. Hannah Ray Lambert wrote this one, the update. Will sent it to me. Battle for Army Accountability Continues says first soldier to have his record cleared after a recruiting scandal. And it all dates back to a problem with a recruiting scandal. We'll get to this. The first soldier to have his false arrest record cleared in connection with a now defunct National Guard recruiting program known as GRAP said the fight for accountability from the Army leadership is not over. I do feel a sense of accomplishment because now they're listening to what we've been trying to say for over a decade, says the captain in an exclusive interview. There's some measure of justice, but what they're doing is not enough. This man is among the nearly 2,000 soldiers slapped with a false arrest record due to participating in a National Guard recruiting program known as GRAP and its Army Reserve counterpart. GRAP ended in 2012 amid accusations of fraud and mismanagement, and the Army launched Task Force Raptor to investigate more than 106,000 people who received some kind of money from that program. And what it was, was it was a program for recruiting. And if you got someone to join, you would get paid a, a, a bonus. And there were allegations that some people had claimed credit for people that they actually hadn't gotten to join. So investigations were launched, but the problem is, that some of the people who were investigated, their record was noted as arrested when they hadn't been arrested. And so that's the problem. So only 137 soldiers were prosecuted, but the Army Criminal Investigation Division, or CID, titled 2,580 soldiers, creating a permanent military record showing that they were subject of an investigation, according to the Army, CID forwarded an estimated 1,900 soldiers' records to an FBI database where the information was then showing as an arrest on a background check, even though the soldiers were never arrested. And then it lists the charges that they may have been investigated for, such as wire fraud. And so if you were swept up in this, they might never have even talked to you, apparently, but they sent a record to the FBI's database saying that you were arrested for a wire fraud. So when you get out and apply for a job and you say, you know, I've never been arrested and they do a background check, uh, it turns out you were. And you were arrested in the Army for wire fraud. So number one, it looks like you lied to them about never being arrested. And number two, what's with this wire fraud thing? And so here's the problem. It doesn't appear to be the FBI's problem. The Army is sending the records over saying, here's what we've got in these people. So I'm not blaming the FBI or any other law enforcement that pulls up a record sent to them by somebody else and say, oh, somebody else sent this to us. It must be true. I mean, who wouldn't trust the Army's records? So it looks like it's the Army's fault, and it looks like it's because they misclassified something. And somebody pointed out to me that it's quite possible that these two entities, that is the military and the FBI, might be, in essence, miscommunicating. What we have here is a failure to communicate. So CID Director Gregory D. Ford announced on November 3rd that his agency had reviewed hundreds of GRAP cases and found that the majority of those are requiring some form of correction. <laughs> it's military doublespeak for, we made some mistakes 
We'll, we'll, we'll look into it. The majority of those are requiring some form of correction. It's very, very passive. Who made that mistake? We don't know, but they're requiring some form of correction. CID is now reviewing all approximately 1,900 cases forwarded to the FBI to determine if soldiers should be removed from the database or, or just remove that arrest thing. The people have been washed out of the service without their retirement or their pensions. What happens to them? says a woman who launched the website Defend Our Protectors in 2015 to advocate for service members targeted by Task Force Raptor. So there were some people who lost their uh, other benefits and, and rights because of this arrest record. And so this woman's been working on this now for seven years, trying to get this straightened out. Uh, she said she's received hundreds of calls, emails, and Facebook messages from soldiers and veterans who never thought they would see progress in the fight to clear their records. Many of them wonder what comes next. So somebody's recognized this, and one person has had their record cleared. The people who haven't been able to get jobs because their background records have been so sullied, what happens to them, she said. So the soldier we talked about was one of the first soldiers to have his case reviewed by Army CID last spring after he wrote an op-ed in the Army Times. So... It took him writing a piece that was published in the Army Times and then Fox News and other news organizations to pick it up and go, look how they're treating our veterans. Uh, so in that piece, the man highlighted the plight of the GRAP participants. And on July 6th, investigators closed his case, maintaining their original determination that probable cause existed uh, was there. Around the same time, CID announced it would review about 900 cases in which recruiting assistants were titled, titled. So this man then was surprised to find out on November 3rd when CID staff called to tell him he was the first GRAP participant to be untitled <laughs> and have his criminal record cleared. After years of fighting to hear those words, he told Fox News he felt neutral. Because he knew there was still a battle ahead. So it's kind of like, well, it's a step in the right direction. It doesn't solve all the problems. And uh, yeah, so here we go. Army officials said during a call with reporters that soldiers can contact the Army if they think their careers have been impacted by GRAP. Many of the soldiers who were denied promotions due to the flag on their records hope to have their ranks corrected and receive their back pay. And one thing you have to remember is, it wasn't saying they were convicted of anything. It was saying they were arrested for something. So you might say, what's the big deal? Well, there are some places where you can apply for a job and they ask you, have you ever been arrested? And so if you answer in the negative and say, no, never been arrested, and they pull your record, oh, you were arrested when you're in the army for wire fraud. Like I said, there's two strikes there. One is that you were arrested for wire fraud. And the second is that you lied when you said you hadn't been arrested. That's what they think. I understand that you didn't. I'm, I'm, I'm making it very clear here. That's the problem. The Army admitted that labeling me as a criminal was flat out wrong, the man says. But then they want to fix it by forcing me to go through another exhaustive bureaucratic process to get my rank and pay. That's just more trauma. Unnecessary thing to do after admitting fault, meaning they were at fault. They should straighten this stuff all out. A lawyer and a retired Green Beret said the board that corrects military records is notoriously slow. <laughs> and he would know, as he's a lawyer and a former you know, Green Beret. And you got to remember, I know people been in the military. Relatives of mine, friends of mine. I know a lot of people in the military. Several recurring themes I've heard speaking to them. And one of them is that the bureaucracy is so slow and occasionally glacially slow to the point where you can't even tell if they're moving. And they're so big and powerful and it is, it's, it's, it's impossible. It's like, it's like you're trying to move a mountain by yourself if you're trying to go up against the military bureaucracy. So saying they're notoriously slow is probably an understatement. He says, I'm familiar with other cases where the petition has been pending three years and 10 months with no answer. Three years and 10 months. Explain to me a process of paperwork that would require you three years and 10 months to figure out. And the reason that, of course, is, is that within the bureaucracy, there is smaller bureaucracies. It's bureaucracies all the way down, okay? <laughs> 
So what happens is somebody gets the request and they go, oh, somebody says that this has been done wrong. They hand it to somebody else and it sits in their desk for three months. Three months later, they pick it up and they go, oh, I'm not the person for this. It goes over here, goes over here, goes over here. And, and next thing you know, it's lost somewhere in a maze and it may have gone through a shredder by now. We don't know. But they'll get to it when they get to it, which means three years and 10 months, still haven't heard. So this man, the one soldier whose name has been cleared, wants the army to completely override the appeals process. Give us our rank, give us our pay immediately, and ensure that future untitled victims do not go through more exhaustive bureaucratic appeals. He added that he wants Army Secretary Christine Wormuth to conduct his promotion ceremony and issue a public apology to the victims who have been titled without due process. And of course, that's another thing is that generally speaking, if you're accused of a crime, you've got the right to know who's accusing you and participate in your defense. And now you're going to say, but Steve, these people weren't weren't convicted and they weren't really charged. They were simply uh, erroneously listed as having been arrested. But it winds up being treated almost like you've been convicted of a crime, the way that the fallout from this is, because there are ramifications to you losing benefits and so on because of your arrest record when you've never been arrested. O'Connell, that's the uh, attorney, Green Beret, has represented hundreds of GRAP participants. He said CID had removed five of his clients from criminal databases as of last week. Five. He's represented hundreds. He's gotten success on five, presumably waiting on the others. CID officials said they expect to complete the review by the end of this year. And uh, Doug O'Connell, the Green Beret lawyer, um, (laughs) I feel so sorry for this guy. I've had court cases that dragged on. I, I, I'm familiar with court cases that literally took 10 years to go to trial. I actually am familiar with, and I worked briefly on a case that was filed, and the trial took place 10 years later. 10 years later. Largely because the courthouse uh, had lost the file and things like that had happened. But here, we've got hundreds of clients. Some of these take years to even look at, and he's managed to succeed on five of them. He's also asking the Army to ensure that fingerprints and DNA samples collected during the task force Raptor are removed from federal databases and destroyed because that was all gathered as part of a criminal investigation that never quite took. Our clients don't trust the government anymore, he said. They don't feel like it's in their best interest for any reason to have the government holding on to a sample of their DNA. And I can tell you right now that the people I know who served in the military Uh, many of them have mixed feelings about it. And I hope I can describe this properly because I suspect the guys in my audience, and there's quite a few guys and gals in my audience who served. And I I have an immense amount of respect for people who do, and that's why I've got a lot of military behind me. Many of them look upon the experience as being extremely important. Uh, They learned a lot. Uh, It made them a better person when they came out the other end of it. Um, And the experiences, the friendships, uh, the memories, the skills that they acquired along the way, they will tell you are priceless, Wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't trade them for anything. But then they'll say the other side of that coin is how the military operates. Big, lumbering bureaucracy where occasionally things get done really stupidly. And so you can have a direct supervisory officer who is extremely good, but it doesn't matter because who they report to, eh. Or some department is run, doesn't matter. And some of it has to do with just how large these organizations are. But when you've got a situation where a couple thousand people as a result of one program have an arrest showing on their records that shouldn't be there, how hard should that be to straighten out? So the attorney said he's gotten five of his clients off that list so far. This other guy came forward and said, yeah, they finally cleared my name after I wrote an op-ed piece for the Army Times. So that's six that we know of. And I think the full number was 1,900. And the weird part about this is a lot of these people don't even know about it because they simply haven't been in a situation yet where somebody pulled their record or did a background check on them, you know. So after a 17-year military career, the man at the beginning of the story is getting ready to leave the active duty army for the reserves. He saw himself as a lifer in the army, 
but is now looking forward to a civilian career in agriculture. I could never return to an organization that has been so reckless with my family's welfare, he said. And that's, that's the issue, you know. So it's unfortunate because, like I said, many of the people I've spoken to that I know talk about the time in the military, and they've got such great memories about most of it. <laughs> They're going to tell you the parts that weren't fun. Of course, of course, you know. But to have somebody go, you know something, I spent 17 years of my life serving my country. And when I get out, I discover that I've got an arrest record, but I was never arrested. And so, again, I'm not blaming the FBI for accepting the records of the Army. I would assume that they would do that, that when one branch of the government gives another branch of the government, these aren't branches in that sense, but different entities in the government, uh, pass records back and forth, you'd expect that they know what they're doing. So when they tell you, hey, we arrested this guy, they go, okay, it's an arrest record. Turns out it wasn't. So there's the problem. So it looks like there's progress being made, but the dam hasn't broken. Right now what we've got is just a little trickle, little trickle, because there's one guy here, and the attorney Green Beret guy said he's gotten five. Five. So that's six we know of out of the 1,900 who had the problem. So it's a step in the right direction. Will, thanks for sending me the story. Hannah Ray Lambert wrote this for Fox News. Battle for Army accountability continues. Uh, says, first soldier to have his record cleared after the recruiting scandal. Questions or comments, put them below. Otherwise, talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. The bicycle is a curious vehicle. Its passenger is its engine.